Okay, okay, it's on. Yes, okay. Six and a half months after coming out, and she was gone. Suicide. Suicide took my closest friend. Why? Was the idea of her just not good enough? Last year, a dear friend of mine came out as transgender. I remember the phone call. She phoned me and told me about how elated her mother was. Her mother had always said that she wasn't born a man. We spoke for about 20 minutes when I heard a shout, a deep, manly shout, scream her male name. I heard a door open and the phone went dead. I texted her immediately after. I got a response, no emotion, no emojis, just, I'm fine. I saw her three days later with a black left eye and a cut in her lip. Cliché, I know, but my heart sank. I asked her what had happened, and she told me about how her father had hit her across the face. Hard. I knew this man. I knew her father. I had been to her house many a times, and he was perfectly fine with the LGBTQIA plus community. And yet, when he was faced with his own son coming out as transgender, he freaked. He didn't know how to handle it. In the question of fight or flight, he chose fight, and he chose it hard. Every two hours and 11 minutes, a person under the age of 25 commits suicide. That's 10 people every day. This happens in schools. One in seven high school students have considered suicide. One in 14 have attempted suicide. Experts say that by simply telling a suicidal teen that they are valid and accepted, we can lower school suicide rates by 90%. Imagine that a world where students actually get through high school without ever considering or attempting suicide. But do you know what drives denial, especially in high school? Parents. Some parents cannot and will not accept their child. This is something that I simply cannot understand. How could you not love your child unconditionally? I mean, what's more difficult, accepting your child for who they are or burying them in the idea that they are just not good enough? Nearly 50% of transgender teens have considered suicide. A third have made a serious attempt. In total, 22% of all transgender youth have successfully committed suicide. Suicide plagues our society and robs us of the richest and most important people. People with unique value, but people like you and me are the reasons that they are not here with us today. A large part of my belief system is that hate is from within. If you harbor hatred towards someone else, then you harbor hatred towards yourself. Essentially, you hate yourself. After all, we shouldn't judge those who sin differently than we do. Male homophobia. Easily the most predominant and colloquialized type of hate in the world. Basically, straight males are scared that a gay man is going to do to them what they do to women, and that a lesbian will treat their woman better than they ever can. The male society is about masculinity, about getting girls. I mean, honestly, going to a single-sex school, I have a first-hand experience of this. Boys at my school are scared of me because I'm different but they had to learn to tolerate me, because I wasn't moving. 
This, however, is not the case for most people. Most people will choose to not have to deal with that which makes them uncomfortable, rather than facing it head on. I mean, come on, if you have the option to remove that which makes you uncomfortable, will you take it? Human nature dictates yes. But I would like to challenge everyone here, I would like to invite every single person in this audience to defy human nature. Go up to that person that makes you uncomfortable and get to the heart of that which makes you uncomfortable. I mean, what scares you? Difference? Diversity? Change? Speaking of schools, did you know that 41% of teachers feel uncomfortable responding to questions about the LGBTQIA community? Only one-third of teachers engaged in efforts to create a safe environment. That means two-thirds did it. In the place that most people spend 12 years at, we have teachers that don't care. Teachers that are uncomfortable being around their very own students. I mean, teachers. The adults that students look to, to teach us the tools and the knowledge that we need to lead a successful life. And yet, we have teachers that simply do not care. Staying with schools, did you know that 11 in 100 high school students are of diverse sexual orientation or different gender identity? Basically, they're queer. Of those 11, only three will come out during high school. This is because high school is by no means an accepting environment for queer youth. This can, however, be changed. With a few students with the right mindset, we can revolutionize the way that schools approach those with a different gender identity or diverse sexual orientation. Students are, after all, the future of tomorrow. Everyone is responsible for denying someone, for not accepting someone. Whether that person is blonde, brunette, tall, short, fat, thin, differently colored, or even remotely different from you, you have denied them. Even I'm responsible for this, and I'm on the stage preaching to you, telling you to accept people, and yet I'm responsible of exactly the same thing. You cannot take your denial back, but you can apologize. Go up to that person that you have denied and tell them that you are sorry. Tell them that they are valid. Tell them that they are accepted. Otherwise, you are just as bad as everyone else. And one day, when it is too late, you will be sorry. To everyone that has been denied, I call to you. Be a maverick. Yes, some of you may recognize this from the vlogger Logan Paul, but it has a far deeper meaning than just his brand. Being a maverick is about working hard every day, fighting hard every day, dreaming big, following your dreams, looking at life through the lens of possibility, denting the universe, and ultimately being yourself. After all, I owe no explanations for my flaws. I don't have to justify my past, my mistakes, or my insecurities. I am growing and learning. Let me live. Thank you.